are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Hello everywhere. Today is Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, everybody. It smells of marijuana here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See. We have um, come with my dad. It is his Christmas tradition that on Christmas Day, he takes a walk down to Brighton. Brighton in Sussex. Brighton in Sussex. So we've all come with him. There's Sky Nicola there. Unfortunately, Tommaso is not here yet. He'll be here tomorrow. And we are taking a walk through the very, very quiet lanes of Brighton. It is not often that you see it so quiet here. And this is a tradition that my dad has done for many, many years on Christmas Day. He loves going places where there's no nobody else. So there is just a couple of pubs open and that's pretty much all. <laughs> coming down onto the beach now and you might not know this if you don't live in England on the 25th of December there is a traditional Christmas Day swim no matter what the weather is and it looks like they might have just finished there's a couple of people still in the water but everybody's here having a look so these are the lifeguards on duty just keeping an eye out for anybody who jumps in Anybody who ever saw my first Positano Diaries episode where I attempted to have a New Year's swim in Positano will remember that I got cramp in both my legs because of the cold. And the cold there obviously was nothing like the cold here. So I think it would be quite easy for somebody to jump in the sea and get cramp and have to be pulled out by these poor guys. <laughs> Okay, so we need some updates. It's now a few days after Christmas. Tommaso has arrived as well, so we are now in five. Bit of a squash in the car, to be honest with you. Um, the weather is absolutely fabulous, as you can see. It's very, very lightly raining, as it only can do in England. But we've decided to get out all the same, and we're going to walk through Bush Park. This is where we are at the moment. This is um, part of the Queen's Parklands, and it's full of deer. I don't know where they are today. Hopefully, we'll see some. We're going to head towards Kingston upon Thames. We'll walk through, probably get some lunch and just get out in the fresh air for a while. Why do you have to roll in duck poo every time we come near ducks? Hmm? <laughs> you like it? <laughs> no, I'm mean with a car in my yeah.
So we've come to this little vegetarian restaurant along the riverfront. Carlo and I have got African aubergine and bean something with sweet potato and pineapple. This guy's got a vegetable gratin. Tomasa has got that. <laughs> and Nicola has got a Jamaican stew. Caribbean. Caribbean stew. Dopo. And there's the river. Dopo vi facciamo sapere se ci è piaciuto oppure no. It is starting to get dark. And we have a long walk back all the way down the river through the park before we get to the car and they shut the gates because this park shuts the gates at night time. Ah, e comunque il cibo nel ristorante era buonissimo. Molto buono. Very nice. Yeah, it was called the Vegetaria Riverside. Uh, in Kingston, just about 300 meters down from the bridge, and it was really good. <laughs> I've taken this lot up to London, and we're going to go for a walk around. Tomas has never been here before. We've come into Waterloo Station, and we're going to start with the graffiti arches at Leak Street. is the graffiti tunnel under Waterloo Station. So we've got all the trains above us at the moment and not many people know about it, but it's a good place to start our tour. So in 2008, Banksy, who is a very famous London street artist, started painting under here and none of his work is a visible anymore because people constantly paint over it. In fact, it smells really strongly of aerosol paint. Every time they see a squirrel, they go mad. <laughs> It is extremely windy here, but I'm just telling Tomasa that he's extremely lucky because nobody has seen Big Ben for a good couple of years or so because it's been covered in scaffolding and now they're starting to uncover it. I feel like the mother duck with her little ducklings. <laughs> they follow me wherever I go. We are now going to cross over the river on Waterloo Bridge here. Trafalgar Square. On to Carnaby Street. Obviously taking them to Bar Italia so they can get a coffee. And this is where television was first ever shown and demonstrated. In fact, there's actually a sign up there. We 
are at Seven Dials in Covent Garden. This is where Seven Streets will meet up with this sundial. It used to be a sundial many years ago. It was built in 1690 and it was meant to be a very affluent area of London. Each building is a triangle shape and there used to be a pub on every single corner. And all of the pubs had tunnels that linked them to each other so people could escape from one pub to another. But this actually, instead of being an affluent area, became a very, very poor area. This was one of the worst slums of London. And the original sundial, which had seven sundials on it, was torn down and is now in Weybridge in Surrey, which is very near where we live. Siamo a Covent Garden. This was an antico mercato dei fiori, londinese. Non so nient'altro. the Tillingbourne fish farm and smokeries in Aben Jahama. Near Shear in Surrey, in the Surrey Hills. It's a beautiful area here. If you want to see like the old quintessential English villages with little thatched cottages and bridges and countryside, it's just stunning here. There is a little stream that runs through the area that used to have watercress beds and this is where all the watercress used to grow and there's the famous trout farm here and we're going to take a look around. So I used to come here when I was little. My dad used to always bring us here and we would always buy fresh trout and we would always get the trout pate. I remember it vividly when I was little. And um, you can also catch your own fish. There's um, fishing ponds over there where you can borrow a rod. There's two people over there now. And it's a great thing to do with kids is to come and get the kids to catch their own dinner. So we came here about two days ago with my dad and we went, to, we came here to buy some trout pate. And unfortunately they didn't have any because it was two days after Christmas, they'd sold out. So he said, come back on Friday. We'll be making it on Friday. You can come and get some then. We walked out and then we were hanging around. Sky went to use the bathroom and he came dashing back out again. He was like, excuse me, I've just recognized your dog. I watch your videos on YouTube, <laughs> which was completely unexpected. So he invited us back. So we're here now. We're gonna have a look at the smoking house and try some smoked salmon. We are going out to see some fish. Yes, we keep, we keep about 40,000 trout a year here. So these are some of the bigger ones, which are ready now. We try and be clever and catch. These are what we're selling now. We put these for our own wow. smokers. Wow! <laughs> In the catch your own pond, people go fish for What is that, Holly? Holly! Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> we put two or three thousand fish in each pond, we stage it, so we get them to the size that you've just seen, that's, a, that's the optimum size ready to sail, and then we have the next batch which will follow on when that one's run out, so we do about four or five batches a year here. So this is Surrey's only smokehouse now? It's Surrey's, it was always Surrey's oldest, but now it's its only smokehouse, yes. Right, and how long's it been here for? The business is nearly 50 years old now. Okay. Um, We've been here 23 years, uh, so we do we smoke traditionally, all the smoked salmon, the smoked trout is smoked, I'll show you that shortly, okay. um, in the old fashioned traditional way. I say we do about 40 or 50,000 fish a year here, um, people turn up and buy fresh trout, it's quite popular these days, or a lot of them go into the catch your own pond, you can go and catch your own, a bit like pick your own strawberries, um, <laughs> but with trout that's good fun. Um, I say we smoke them in the shop, make pâtés out of them. Right, we're going to go into the smokehouse and see how the fish is smoked. I've got some smoke trout on the go in the smokehouse, but it's just to sh trying to show you the whole process. So this is big fish out of the farm. 
We're very traditional here. Everything is smoked old fashioned the proper way. No chemicals, no dyes, no additives, no nothing. So these fish will be filleted off, um, cleaned out, they'll be put into a brine solution which is just basically salt and water for a period of time, usually overnight. Once that happens, these portions will be taken into the smokehouse, which I'm going to show you in a second, um, which is where they're hot smoked and cooked. So this is our hot smoker. It was an old, an old electric one. Um, literally digital and we didn't want to have any part of that so we turned it into an old-fashioned kiln and we use local hardwood and obviously the dust there next to it so get a nice hot ember so in here I've got some of the trout which I just showed you so you've got your wood smouldering on the bottom producing the heat it's a nice steady heat and your trout cooking in the smoke so that's our finished product yeah a lovely dry cured Locked up, Shetland, as we said earlier, smoked salmon. Um, so I'll now show you how we get to that stage. So this is how the salmon comes down with all the fat, a few bones on it, it's pin boned in the middle, which is a lovely piece of fresh salmon. So, that, so we take the end bit off. This doesn't go to waste. This is used for pate, quiches. Okay. You can put it in pasta, anything you like. Mm. You literally mm. have all the flavours right away through. And pay particular attention to the fact is there's no of those great big fat lines in that salmon. Yes. It's very small. Yeah. Which means this fish has been swimming in a tidal sea cage, not crammed in over crammed cages, fed lots of ultra fatty food, mm. antibiotics and all that. Be you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely different from the packaged smoked salmon that I can get back in Italy. You can really taste the the smokiness and ah, oh. good yeah. It's like a completely different fish. It's so good. You watch. There you go. <laughs> and all we do goes onto our label machine. The finished result. Beautiful, amazing. That's your supper. Thank you so much. <laughs>